Hello. Welcome to my empty easel. Still tiny, just nothing on it. It's the topic of the video. Well, all easels. Or at least the ones I care about. And I'll introduce you to our special guest. Tinier easel. That's right, I have this even tinier easel that I handmade out of basswood from work because they were gonna throw it away and I wanted serotonin so I got it from this tiny easel right here and to better make our comparison here I have this other tiny easel still tiny just I didn't make it and it's just okay so here I have my two itty bitty easels. This one on the left is called an H-frame easel because, well, and therefore this one is an A-frame. Now these are very bare bones compared to actual normal human size easels, but they'll be good to illustrate the differences. I would say the main differences are the adjustability and the footprint and maybe also the hardiness of the easel as a whole, since typically, once you get into the really pricey options, it's all H-frames. Let's talk about A-frames. A-frames, also called liar easels, a word I learned the pronunciation of in my senior year of high school art history class where I had to do a presentation on ancient Greek vases when I accidentally said leer and someone in the back shouted, liar and I thought they were calling me a liar. Anyway, these easels are typically the more affordable floor easel option. They have one back leg that can fold out to stand an angle, and it can fold flat to the rest of the easel, making it really easy to collapse for storage, but also making it a bit less structurally sound, especially if you're interested in your painting being completely vertical. A-frame easels usually have less forward-backwards adjustments, as well as vertical adjustments. Obviously, neither of these can adjust vertically with the shelf. A lot of A-frames sort of have set rungs that the shelf can go onto rather than full adjustability that H-frames can have with their little tightening knobs. I will illustrate that here with images, hopefully. I hope they look good. I hope they're cool. I love them. Now, I also have this big A-frame. It's still tiny, just a little less tiny. And this one, which is not typical for a lot of actual floor easels, does have, if I could can I do it, I can't do it. Well, you can loosen this, and then you can move this up and down. But obviously it's just with this little bolt and it's not the most structurally useful. I wouldn't put anything heavy on here. This is just for display. That brings us to H-frames. <laughs> These are typically a lot more substantial and a lot harder to move around. So their best cap is a stable piece of furniture. Some of the smaller ones are a bit easier to fold up and store. Mm -hmm. this video of me not being able to use any of my things. Yeah, some of the small ones can do this, but obviously if you have one that's like five feet tall, it's still gonna be pretty clunky when you flatten it down. Some of the smaller ones are a bit easier to fold up and store, but they're nowhere near as portable as an A-frame. There are some cheaper H-frames that have adjustment rungs, like the A-frames, but I would stay away from those, since in those easels, your shelf is going to be connected to your mast, which means that if you adjust it too high, then your mast is going to go straight into your ceiling if you don't have the luxury of living in a cathedral. I touched on earlier that you can adjust the H-frame so that the canvas is vertical. This is really useful if you need to photograph your painting and you don't have a nice wall to put them on, or if you're using pastels, apparently. Pastel artists like to use easels that are vertical or even slightly forward 
This one doesn't quite go vertical, but it can go vertical. A lot of a lot of actual A trains can go totally vertical. Some can kind of go a little bit forward. That way, for pastel artists, if you're using something dusty, it can kind of just like fall forward and not just like sit on the surface and get all smudged around. Apparently. I don't know. I'm allergic to pastels. But just to recap, if you're looking for an H-frame easel, it would behoove you to find one with a fully adjustable shelf, the ones with the knobs in front, the ability to make your easel, therefore painting perfectly vertical, and ideally some form of safety from the shelf squishing your feet should it fall. Typically, they'll have the feet, the shelf comes down, these feet will hit it rather than your feet, but if you get like a cheaper one, it might not have that, but you just wanna make sure there's something in between your feet and the shelf if it goes down. Alternatively, just don't drop the shelf. Make it tight. So, to summarize, if you value affordability or don't have a permanent studio space, so you need to move your easel out of the way a lot, an A-frame easel is probably a good option for you. But if you have a dedicated space and a little more money to spare, I highly recommend getting an H-frame. The one I have isn't even that good, but I've had it for six years and I've had no issues. Personally, when I graduated art school and was looking for an easel, I got the cheapest H-frame I could find that had an adjustable shelf detached from the mast, and the other things happened to be there without me really thinking about the need for them. In terms of tabletop easels, like my bigger, tiny easels here, I honestly find these ones less sturdy than the ones that are more of just like a square box that kind of folds down. Folds down. I mean, these ones obviously look a lot better and you sort of get into the same dilemma. Do you want sturdiness or do you want the light portable option? Because obviously these are really nice, they're small, they can fold, they're flat, put them out of the way. Or, you know, you can use them to display something. Put it on there. It's adorable. Yay. But they're not as functional. If you're doing something that's like the full size, I feel like there's always a risk of kind of just wobbling or even toppling it over if it's heavy or big, which is not ideal. Obviously, if you're getting to a point where you're painting something like this big, you might want to start considering getting a floor easel, but obviously it's not right for everyone since you do need a space somewhere on your floor. Usually, if I'm sketching or doing something at my desk and I want a really low profile, I'll actually use my tablet stand. Now, obviously, this is not an easel. <gasps> I got this on eBay for $20 when I got my drawing tablet, and it's been really great for keeping my tablet elevated and helping my wrist not hurt when I'm drawing. And it's also nice to use with my iPad and with sketchbooks. It's probably one of the best $20 I've ever spent on art supply related things, but honestly, this is super light. It can be literally like 100% flat. You can have it a bunch of different angles and angle it like super specific, but I actually put some masking tape down so it stays up a little bit higher. It's really only for things that are like flat or like a sketchbook where it kind of holds itself together. Um, it's kind of hard to use it for paintings. You can tell that I have done so. I like to joke that my favorite art supplies are usually not things that are real art supplies, and I think this is one of those things, but that's life sometimes. Sometimes you don't think you're an art supply, and all of a sudden, you're an art supply. What a world. Now there are some specialty easels that I'd like to touch upon, although they're probably too niche for a lot of people. There are French easels, also called plein air easels, that are very light and usually fold up to a nice little box so you can take them out into the wilderness and paint on location. 
Since they're made to be very light and portable, they have really flimsy legs, and I wouldn't recommend using them for your main home easel, as they're just as expensive as a mid-range H-frame. There's also something referred to as a watercolor easel. It's essentially an H-frame that has the capability to turn all the way back horizontally so you can have your piece flat as if it's on a table. It's great for watercolor, varnishing, or if you just need your piece to be horizontal for whatever reason. They're really cool. In all honesty, I'd love to have one, but I've also seen people break these easels much more than any other while working in the art store trenches. So many easels lost. So if you're interested in this type of easel, I'd highly recommend making sure you know how to use it and what every knob does before just going in there and adjusting it willy-nilly. And don't leave it unattended in an art store, probably. I think this is a good time to point out that if you're looking for an easel, I highly recommend you go to your local art supply store to really get a sense for what these all look like in person. If they have easels set up, then most likely they'll have some knowledge about them since someone had to build those. That used to be me. Ask them if you can prop up some canvases or pads on it. See how it'll work for you and see how easy it is to adjust. Make sure you like the feel and size of it since this is quite the investment. Also, if you see those flimsy metal easels and you wanna know my opinion on those, don't. Don't buy those. They're not even cheaper than A-frame wood easels and they really often lose their tightening capabilities, and it's just not worth the hassle. If you only have like $50 for an easel, just get a tabletop sketchbox easel. Also, there's nothing like just leaning your sketchbook or canvas on your table while you're working on it. We've all been there, and you probably already have a table. If you want to take a look at exactly what I have here in my arsenal of easels, I'll link them below. I'm not affiliated with any of the brands or the websites, but just for educational purposes, I will give you that information. Obviously, if you find something similar, I'm sure it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> this tiny H-frame easel I have is really old and I have no idea what it is, but I'll link something similar. And most of the ones I can find online are actually a little bit more tiny, so that's fun. You get an even tinier one. If you have any questions about easels or you want me to talk about a different kind that I didn't bring up or if something was unclear or if you want me to make an even tinier easel, let me know. And you can check out my Instagram for more art at snoonsart, one word, and... Thanks for watching.